using OneDrive for nearly continuous backup. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you've seen any of my videos, you're probably already aware that I'm a big fan of backing up. And in fact, in previous videos, I've shown you how to create a full image backup and how to use the file history feature in Windows to backup even more. Both of those techniques are fundamental, but they have one small problem. They're local. They are all happening to an external drive that is usually right next to your machine or at least in the same facility. Another part of backing up, a part of a full backup strategy, is to include what's called off-site backup. Tools like OneDrive are perfect for this because when you place files in OneDrive, they are automatically uploaded to the OneDrive servers online, by definition, off-site. So what I want to show you in this video is how to set up and use OneDrive so that the work you're doing is saved automatically, almost within seconds of actually saving it to disk. So here we are in Windows 11, and you can see that OneDrive is currently not configured on this machine. I unlinked the account from what I was using previously. So we'll click on it. Now, it's important to understand that OneDrive is a Microsoft service. It requires that you use a Microsoft account. Now, in my case, since this machine logs in using a Microsoft account, when I say sign in, it's actually pre-filled in the email address that I've used to sign in. And in fact, when I hit sign in, I'm not going to have to enter a password because it already knows that it's me. You may need to enter a password depends on exactly how your specific system is set up. So the OneDrive folder is here. That's the next thing it's telling you. In my case, it's showing me that the OneDrive folder is in C, Users, Askly, which is the username I'm using on this machine, slash OneDrive. Make note of this location. We'll be using it a little later. I'll click Next. Now, this backup feature is not the backup I'm talking about. This backup feature, and I've got an article about how bad this backup feature really is, is something that really just serves to confuse and ends up eating up more of your OneDrive space than you realize. I strongly recommend that you always turn these off so that this backup folders on this PC feature is not enabled. We'll click OK and OneDrive is set up. We've got it running. If you like, you can next through this little bit of marketing information about OneDrive itself and how wonderful it is. Uh, we'll open the OneDrive folder and there we are. We've got some things in OneDrive right now. So we've got OneDrive set up. What was it doing? Why do we care? Here's why we care. We can now go online and take a look at OneDrive.com. And you can see it's the same OneDrive. This is OneDrive Online. And this on the left-hand side is OneDrive on my PC. If I create a file here on my PC, I'll just do a new text document and we'll call it example dot text within seconds that file appears online yes online means i may have to hit refresh but the bottom line here is that it showed up automatically if i create a file here online we'll go ahead and create a new plain text document other example dot text I have the opportunity to put some text in it. Save. Close it. And you can see here we have example.txt and other example.txt online, but it also automatically showed up on my PC. That's the magic of OneDrive. Any change that I make on the left-hand side on my PC is automatically reflected in the files that are uploaded to OneDrive.com. Anytime you add or update a file or folder within your OneDrive folder, it's automatically uploaded to OneDrive Online.
And then anytime a file appears or is updated in OneDrive Online, it's automatically downloaded to the OneDrive folder on your PC. So how do we then make this even easier? Well, one of the ways to do that is to set your OneDrive folder to be the default folder for the applications you use. Now, I can't tell you how to do that for every application, but I can show you for, for example, Microsoft Word. Okay, I've switched to running Microsoft Word, and you can see that it's here. I could make new documents if I wanted to or whatever. So the thing to do is to click on Options and then look at the set of save options, the options related to saving. You'll see here that there is a default local file location. That is currently set to users, Askly, documents. The problem with that is that it's not within the OneDrive folder. In other words, anything you put in the documents folder on your PC is only on the documents folder on your PC. On the other hand, if we were to change this default folder to be anywhere within the OneDrive folder, then we automatically have all our documents that we create on this machine automatically uploaded to OneDrive Online. We'll change it by doing this. I'm going to hit Browse, and you can see it just shows up in Documents, the current location of the Documents folder. I'm going to the OneDrive folder, and you can see that there's a Documents folder here. This is one of the confusing side effects of the backup feature, the Files and Folder Backup feature that I mentioned earlier. Ignore this. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new folder here, My Word Documents, and we will double click into that. So now what we've done is we've selected My Word Documents, we hit OK, and you can see here now the default file location is Users, Askly, OneDrive, My Word Documents. Any document that I now create in Word will get placed there. We'll hit OK. So I'm going to create a new document. We'll put something in it. We'll do a File, Save As, and we'll make sure that we've selected My Word Documents. We'll give it a name, Test Example, and we'll save it. Now, if we go take a look at our OneDrive folder, in my Word documents is this test example document. Now, as long as I edit it, I can make changes to it. This is the second version of this document. I have now added a word to it, so I've changed it a little bit. We'll close Word. We'll see that it is being uploaded to the cloud. And in fact, if I now go back to OneDrive Online and hit Refresh, We'll see that not only is there a My Word Documents folder, but our test example.docx is there, and it reflects the most recent changes. It has that word added. Now, we have created a document on our PC, just like any other document on our PC, and as we work on it, changes are being reflected in our off-site copy in OneDrive.com. One of the neat features about OneDrive.com, however, is that it allows you to look at version history. So I'm going to right click on my test example.docx and you'll see down here there is something called version history. And sure enough, there are two versions of this document. The version that I started with, which does not have the extra word that I added, and the current version. If I wanted to revert to this older version, I can. If I wanted to download this current, this older version as a separate version, I can do that too. This concept of a revision history is incredibly valuable because it represents yet another layer of backup. Not only are your files that you're working on being uploaded to the cloud automatically, 
but OneDrive is keeping all of the old versions for I believe it's up to 30 days. So if you decide that a document has had too many changes or you forgot what it looked like three weeks ago, you can go back online at OneDrive.com and get the history. The bottom line here is that OneDrive is a wonderful addition to your existing backup strategy. By making sure that you're working on files in the OneDrive folder, by definition, every time you save them, they're being copied online. And that is an additional part of a very healthy backup strategy. For updates, for comments, for related links and more, visit askleo.com slash 29368. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.